Finally, after 10 years, the Congress of the United States, through this legislation, is going to make the simple, prop make the simple statement, simple proposition, that under the law of war, you can be held as an enemy combatant indefinitely. In what can only be considered a tragic irony, the U.S. Senate passed out of the final conference committee the controversial National Defense Authorization Act of 2012, coinciding with the 220th anniversary of the ratification of the Bill of Rights. Section 1031 of the National Defense Authorization Act, otherwise known as the NDAA, provides broad authority for the federal government to use the military in domestic operations in order to detain Americans indefinitely and without trial. Such a move not only whitewashes the natural rights of Americans, whereby even publicly criticizing the federal government can now rise to the purposefully vague definition of belligerent act. It also sits in direct violation of Posse Comitatus, an 1878 law forbidding the use of the military at home and against Americans. Here is Congressman Paul's remarks on the bill. This last week, the U.S. Congress passed a bill uh, which repeals a Posse Comitatus, which means that they, we have now uh, institutionalized and codified uh, martial law. Right now, the, the battle against uh, terrorism involves all of us. Everybody in this country is a potential terrorist. And the words that they use in there to bring everybody in as a potential terrorist is any associated forces, which means that if you happen to visit a website, happen to attend a meeting, happen to do a, one association, you can be accused of being a terrorist, and the bill says you have no right to a lawyer. They've been abusive of this for many years, but now it's been codified. And this president, just about a year ago, announced that some of these bad people, even though they're American citizens, don't deserve even charges, that they can now be assassinated. We should be consciously aware of terrorism and deal with it, but to say that we're at war at, with the world and we can send a drone missile and send our troops any place we want is very, very dangerous. Endless wars, attack on civil liberties, this Patriot Act is not very patriotic, let me tell you. It's an invasion of your privacy, and I often wonder how many members of Congress would have voted for the Patriot Act if it would have been called the repeal of the Fourth Amendment. Big government is alive and well, but the grassroots are waking up. As Congressman Paul stated, the bill requires absolutely no supporting evidence to issue the order of detention, instead leaving it up to the whim of the executive branch to act as judge, jury, and in some cases having already decreed the power to assassinate Americans earlier in the year, executioner. The danger behind allowing any law that includes such arbitrary terms as belligerent act simply cannot be overstated as the Department of Homeland Security has already published multiple reports labeling those who support the Constitution or protest the Federal Reserve to be domestic belligerents and thus, in the eyes of the federal government, a threat to national security. Even more disconcerting is the level of pompous disregard elected members of Congress show as they arrogantly eradicate the founding principles of America, trampling upon the very ideals that helped spark the first American Revolution. With Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina recently stating during debate in the Senate, please know what will come your way. Death, detention, and prosecution. And when I say I want my lawyer, you tell them shut up you don't get a lawyer. Further, Democratic Senator Carl Levin of Michigan, one of the bill's primary sponsors who drafted the original version, in secret, along with Republican Senator John McCain, states the Obama administration specifically requested Section 1031 of the bill to be expanded to include the indefinite detention of Americans, threatening to veto the bill if it failed to encompass citizens and non-citizens alike. However, one member of Congress has openly stated that the military should not comply if the order comes down to arrest any American on American soil. Here is Representative Justin Amash last night on Fox Business' Andrew Napolitano show, Freedom Watch. Well, Congressman, what, what should we do about this? What, what would you tell your constituents who admire your love and defense of freedom that they should do if the military comes calling? Well, I don't believe that they should comply with uh, any sort of 
uh, detention attempts at, uh, on the homeland here, taking American citizens from their home, homes are, is outrageous. And so I believe no one should be forced to comply with that. To know at least there's a few congressmen out there that do have a good head on their shoulders. Now, according to the group Open Congress, an organization that tracks federal legislation, the bill receives private sector support mainly from those involved in the receipt of military contracts, such as Honeywell. Honeywell, a company historically known by the public as a manufacturer for thermostats, for heating and air conditioning, is in reality one of the largest U.S. military contractors with revenues of over $4 billion, and they enthusiastically support this draconian piece of legislation. Thus, this bill now puts everyone, whether Tea Party member, Occupy Wall Street protester, son or daughter of the modern liberty movement, in the crosshairs of a federal government who sees the Constitution as an encumbrance upon their absolute and unquestionable rule. With the bill now clearing both House and Senate conference committees as of yesterday, the only hope at this point to halt the legislation from becoming law is for the patriotic Americans to flood the White House with telephone calls, emails, and faxes demanding that this president not sign the bill into law. I'm asking you to please melt the White House switchboard today and until the president refuses to sign this bill. The comment line and the switchboard line is 202-456-1111 and the switchboard is 202-456-1414. While Americans have been led to believe that Obama will sign the legislation, there is still the chance that he may veto the law to gain approval with the American people. Whatever the reason to preserve liberty or to gain favor, let us hope and pray that our efforts are successful and that he does veto this bill. Again, the numbers to call are 202-456-1111 and the switchboard 202-456-1414. Please remember to like, favorite, and share this video. Leave your comments below. And to find patriots like you who have a heart for restoring the republic, join our exclusive social networking home to more than 34,000 concerned Americans at rtr.org. For The Reality Report, I'm Gary Franchi.